Good evening everyone, my name is Paul Young. I'm just going to walk you through South Africa. and My focus will be on government policies, the economic conditions, and they're just to give you a lay of the land. The reason why I want to do these videos because it's very critical to understand what's going on in the global economy, what's driving some of the, the, the factors that influence the overall economic growth across the world, but also what's going on individually with some key countries as part of the overall driving mandates in terms of both taxation reform supporting social programs as well as the overall economic benefits for a country now this is only one um, view of South Africa it's not deemed to be the only view of South Africa so it's going to give you a good perspective of what's going on in South Africa from the government's perspective as well as taxation rates the e economy itself and just the overall flavor of what's happening in South Africa because it's a key country when you start looking at the commodity side of the world and it's also a key country as part of uh, industrialization of Africa so it's a key driver of what's going on in Africa but it's also giving a good key indicator of what's going on in terms of its economic and government policies. We a little brief bio about myself on CPA CGI trade but I really focus on getting information out both on government policies, economic trends as well as what needs to happen in terms of policies to move forward to diversify an economy or support social programs to make them sustainable. This particular presentation I'm going to talk about with South Africa is more to give you a view of what's going on in that country. Here's my agenda. I typically talk about government itself, talk about GDP, give you a little overview of lay a land with the economy, talk a bit about the banking sector, some government policies, key ones that drive performance. I'll talk about corruption and I'll talk about trade. Now, like anything else, we're going through a lot of different governments are struggling to stay in power or facing issues. South Africa is not immune to any sort of issues it's not faced. The current president, Zuma, is under an investigation in terms of what's going on in terms of some deals that were made that were up in the air that there's an investigation going on. Now, he's been exonerated so far, but it's something that you need to watch out because whenever you see a government president facing a lot of criticism from the opposition, it can lead to an instability in government. So it's something that you need to watch because any sort of instability in government can impact government policies. It can also impact the economy itself from the currency rates to inflation because the they become less stable governments and less stable governments isn't a good thing for a country. If you look at GDP in Africa, it's basic South Africa, it grew the most in 2011 and would hit about 417 billion. It's actually shrunk quite a bit but that is in alignment to what you're seeing happen in terms of the commodity prices also the manufacturing sector is down so the prediction for growth in 2016 it's only about 0.6% growth. That's nothing. So it's basically flat growth. It's actually struggling right now to deal with multitude of efforts there. It's got significant structural unemployment around 25% a quarter of the people in the country are unemployed. So they have to do some sort of reforms there to support the economy. But that being said, it's going to be tough to do that due to the fact that commodity prices are low and low demand for mining, which is impacting those sectors. So what the government does in terms of stimulation of the economy is something to watch out for as you move forward as a view of South Africa. This gives you an idea of the economy. A boat, a good chunk of South Africa economy is is mining and you can see the trends here that in general in the mining areas anywhere from 10 to 25 percent down that's significantly and that's impacting the shrinkage that we've seen in the GDP over the last few years South Africa banking sector if there's one strong suit their banking sector is very strong uh, in terms of its competitive so it's really strong in terms of thing however there are some issues with it and a lot of its structural issues of how the banking system supports certain amount of people in Africa and it's something that they're going to be looking at in terms of helping them get more people on the borrowing side or whether it's business investment or consumer debt that support the economy there because like most countries retail sales and consumer spending drives in the economy so South Africa is probably going to have to go through some sort of reforms to support more consumer spending more effort to do infrastructure spending all that is part of the overall diversification of the economy to support growth and that's something you'll watch as part of the banking sectors the budget deficit now 
in South Africa is about 2.4 percent of GDP so that they're basically saying they're struggling with revenue because they've seen a, a de deterioration in the economy but they still have to pay expenses they have talked about tax reforms where that means hiking consumption taxes or looking at corporate taxes they have been looking at that but they've held off on that because of the structural natures of the economies and they're not sure business can absorb those taxes so there's concerns about moving forward with that if you look at foreign direct investment after South Africa has been a, a huge influence of getting inward flow of capital investment so it's something to watch for in terms of what's happening with those sectors because as long as you have mining stuff and they're a critical sector too for areas like chromite uh, lithium some of the rare metals and stuff like that South Africa has the right ge 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 geological background to basically produce some of these metals so it's something to watch for the taxation rates are competitive from the corporate and consumption taxes so it's an area to watch because as I said before the government may look at reforms in those areas may be looking at increased kind of offsets the higher cost of doing business but also the fact is that revenue is down corruption South Africa has done a pretty good job in terms of corruption they're really low in terms of the quintile of where they are in terms of their rankings there's still improvements to be done again a lot of these governments as I've emphasized need to bring in audit departments bringing more transparencies and accountability in to have repercussions for some of this stuff so there needs to be more investigations on accountability and oversight I've always emphasized for most government value for money becomes very critical and there needs to be for each action needs to be an equal reaction if money is misspent because people need to be held accountable for how the money is spent and I think that's an overall flavor no matter what country you deal with that has to be emphasized as we move forward you can't talk about South Africa without overlaying it to Canada Canada is becoming a bigger player in South Africa because of the mining interests plus also Canada is looking at diversify its exports so South Africa is one of those countries it's targeting as an entrance point to Africa so as we talk about globalization Canada is looking for opportunities to expand and this gives you a good example of what's happening in terms of total trade between the two countries it's about 1.5 billion in combined trade. It's a small amount, but it's an area that can grow, and it's an area that Canada should be looking to expand in and to get trade deals and foreign investment protection accent as part of the overall diversification of trade. Now, this was only deemed to be one quick perspective on South Africa, but it's also to give you an idea. It's despite what some of the different people will say, people need to get out there and start looking at what's happening in other countries whether that's government policies whether that's economic policies whether that's taxation policies to see what's triggering growth because it's growth that drives an economy and if you can't expand exports then you're not bringing that extra money into your economy and if you don't bring that extra money in your economy it puts pressures on governments to deliver the quality of services and that's where social programs come in the biggest mistake governments do and I've said this through several presentations is they do social programs that at all costs without properly looking for value for money or looking at how better to leverage existing resources it's easy to tax because that's a simple way to do it but the reality is is we're getting to a point where taxing more people whether it's business or personal isn't going to benefit an economy so at some point these governments have to look at value for money and emphasizing mismanagement and that's really where I think we're hitting a through a critical slippery slope because we get people elected on policies but what's happened is the transparency and accountability isn't there and there's no influence in making sure that value for money is done the old saying is it's easy to fix a problem with money it takes something special to fix it without it and that's what we're trying to head with governments in terms of efficient effective use of resources so as you look out and may have discussions with your peers your local politicians whether they're municipal provincial state or federal you should be emphasizing I want value for money because it emphasizes the need to get the maximum value out of a dollar not just incre incurring more taxes to support some sort of agenda and that's something you need to understand as you're talking to your politicians thank you